is so happy to be with you today. Uh, I'm Sue Williams from Sociology and I want to share with you uh, just a snippet of some of the things, the, the takeaways from the Distance Teaching and Learning Conference in Madison, Wisconsin uh, this summer. It was a fantastic time. But I chose uh, to, to talk about podcasts today. So that's the title, Do You Hear What I Hear? And uh, let me tell you for sure, it's changed the way I've thought about uh, teaching. I, I thought there was nothing left new. There's always something new. So I'm not kidding when I say it's bigger than you think. 21% of Americans aged 12 and up list, have listened to a podcast in the last month. That's up 17% from 2015 and 75% since 2013. So... Um, you know, podcasts can be disruptive, and by that I mean it interrupts some of our other channels of communication. To provide a little bit of context to what I'm talking about with that 21%, 21% of the country uses Twitter. This amounts to 57 million Americans who use Twitter on a regular basis, and the same number that listen to a podcast regularly. Other estimates say that 40% of Americans use have listened to at least one podcast. So it's really growing. Podcasts disrupt other social media and become a major delivery venue. Provides huge potential to sort of meet students where they are and where are they on the go, of course. This is another way that disruption can be constructive. We can disrupt um, the, the daily demands of the students by having an on-the-go kind of device that can sort of interlope into the learner's daily life. Overwhelmingly, most of podcasts are list, listened to on a smartphone or tablet. 59% uh, of online students surveyed use a mobile device at, for at least some kind of classwork. I've witnessed that myself, haven't you? And 67% of prospective online students indicated that they would do the same. So it's really a phenomenon that's just bursting on the scene. So we have the demand. It's a big one. We have modes of delivery that are uh, phenomenal and really fit with our, our audience, our students and their lifestyle. Uh, and then it's a developmental kind of process. I don't expect that any of us would jump in sink or swim and have all of our uh, lectures suddenly on podcast. But there's, there's other ways to develop. One of the things you can do is go straight to the pros. There are thousands and thousands, I think, tw by, there's not even a good estimate, but pro tens and tens of thousands of podcasts are available. So I've listed just a few of these here. I will put the links and some uh, explanation on a handout that hopefully you can get to, or you can write me and I'll be glad to give you these. Serial is the one that just burst on the scenes. This American Life is the most popular series. Revisionist History is a new one, and then The Cult of Pedagogy uh, for Podcast is sort of a how-to one. So all of this is, is wonderful and gives us a lot of ideas and tools, but we also at some point will want to do, do the DIY project, right, so that we can tailor it to our own courses and to our own uh, kind of uh, course objectives. I find it's not only challenging, but it's the perfect opportunity to sort of put in maybe that micro burst. Now is uh, everything is about micro because we've lost our concentration ability mostly uh, after eight seconds, science says. Uh, even a goldfish has nine. So what does that say about us? Uh, so now, now you can have your own podcast to deliver. Lessons, instructions, reminders, inspiration, whatever it is that you might uh, that you might want to add. I find it really challenges me to get, I, I realize that I'm such a visual person 
that I was using uh, visual graphics and so forth as a crutch. Now with, with only audio available, I really have to get descriptive, I have to get precise, I have to get informative, and I have to set the tone. So all of those can be done with podcast, and there's a lot of advantages to that. So um, hold on now, and I'm going to give you just a little demonstration of my very first one. This series is called More Than Just a Number, and the particular episode that I'm going to share with you is fraught with possibility and peril. So hopefully you'll get a, a little taste for, for what it's like. And everyone is waiting, waiting on you. Welcome to the first episode of More Than Just a Number. I'm a professor at Kansas State University. My students call me Dr. Sue. As weird as it sounds, I'm fascinated with prisons and prisoners, and especially with finding ways to convey the human costs of mass incarceration. Standing still is hard. You might recognize the music here as the theme song from the wildly popular Netflix series, Orange is the New Black. I've learned a lot from that show, though perhaps in ways you wouldn't expect. Uh, in many ways, I've actually been there. Early on a Thursday morning, January the 17th, 2013, exactly 25 weeks before the first airing of Orange is the New Black, I and my team entered a state facility for incarcerated women. Walking through the prison gates for the first time is a bit surreal, I'll have to tell you. The gate closes behind you, and suddenly you are transported to a different world, and in many ways, a different time. My biggest problem when I first got here was I wanted every, I wanted to live two weeks ahead of time. You know what I mean? I wanted to live in the future. I didn't want to live in today. Today was terrible because I was incarcerated. But I felt like in two weeks time, I wouldn't be incarcerated or that was my thinking at the time. I could live outside the fence. I could live back at home in Wichita with my family. But while I was here, it was, uh, I was kind of detached. Time in prison is different. No prison cells have clocks, yet everyone is aware of time. Time passes, but where does it go? One sentence is measured in time, but for some there is no end or gate time. Old timers know about doing time and scoff at newbies who do not and who must learn on their own what that means. Suddenly, one's very identity is wrapped up in prison time. Who you were was at a different time. And who you will become is unwritten. For now, you're in limbo, with shifting stance, sands beneath your feet. Is this real or an apparition? Or is who I was an illusion, and now this is real? It's like this, a woman sometimes feels or waits for death by the hand of her abuser. Then when she decides to live and stand up and fight back, she faces a different kind of death, life in prison. Yeah. So, yeah. Norma Jean is one of more than two million Americans. So what we can see here is that Podcasting makes information personal. It's convenient and easy to consume. And by the way, this is, you'll see three of my grand dogs here. They're, they're in on everything I do, just about. Podcasting cuts costs. This is Alberta. And podcasting is portable. And you know what? Podcasting is fun and effective, and it's a great way to share 
what you'd like to uh, uh, open up to your students. So be your own hero and have fun with it. Bye-bye.